2016 NBA Draft, the Phoenix Suns select Dragon Bender. Dragon Bender, born November 17, 1997. When it comes to evaluating, then drafting players from a different country, it's been a hit or miss and still developing skill for the NBA as it would be for any league attempting the same. Sometimes you can fall into the trap of seeing a player comfortable in his country and confident he could dominate the pairs he grew up in competition with and believe in the hype, then spread the hype around and claim you found the next European star only for him to end up out of shape, out the league, and forcing his tattoo to drink beers from a bottle at a house party as the only 7-footer in his prime not in the NBA. One thing over the years I've personally found easier to do as a fan of the game is not to expect anything from an import player as they'd be coming into the NBA and just allow their journeys to play out. Of course, a scout doesn't have that luxury as it's their job to sell a player they believe in simply to grow the game itself and sometimes, some say most times when it comes to European players making the transition successfully to the NBA, they get it wrong. No one knew Giannis would become who he became, a two-time MVP, champion that didn't need to team up, perennial all-star, and top two player in the league currently. He wasn't even a lottery pick. The other best player in the league currently, another champion who did it without teaming up with the second and even third best player in his conference, perennial all-star, and sits on the throne as the best player in the game, Nikola Jokic, was a late second round pick. The list can go on and on when speaking about projections not going as expected and today's feature is no different. With one of the coolest basketball names ever, Dragon Bender received a lot of notoriety from an early age. It helped he grew to 7 foot faster than most and actually looked the part in his early years as the next star from Croatia that could possibly make the NBA. His timing was impeccable too, with his biggest NBA comparison Kristaps Porzingis being drafted a year before him in the same 4th overall position hyped just the same and actually had a solid all-rookie first team year and then the NBA did what it always does, become infatuated with the build and attempt to duplicate it as many times as possible. I can't tell you how many players were the next Jordan or next LeBron, next Shaq, Westbrook, Curry or next Dirk Nowitzki, which today's feature has also been called. Years later, the Dragon is still out the league at 25 years old, 22 since he last played, says he'll likely stay in Europe for a while and considered one of the biggest draft busts of the 2010s. Dragon Bender was supposed to be the next Euro superstar, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Salute to Omar LaRue on IG for this request. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Dragon Bender is a 7 foot power forward center from Bosnia and Herzegovina that soon moved to Croatia, first falling in love with the game at 6 years old. He'd watch his older brother sign up for basketball leagues and look so happy playing with his friends that the younger Dragon wanted the same. By 12 years old, the love for the game grew to wanting to make the NBA and hopefully become a player like his idol Tony Kukoc, so he moved with Croatian star Nikola Vujicic who became his guardian and began training to one day be drafted to the NBA. He made his professional debut in the ABA and Croatian league with KK Split at just 15 years old before quickly being moved up and eventually landing with Maccabi Tel Aviv on a 7 year contract. If he could make himself a draft prospect after 4 years, he was free to leave. If not, he'd have 3 more years with the team. Bender didn't need that as a few months before the 2016 draft, he declared at just 18 years old, taken 4th overall by the Phoenix Suns and expected to be the next Kristaps Porzingis. Stun number 1, not Kristaps Porzingis. In my opinion, the initial growth stun for Dragon Bender was him being hyped as the next Kristaps Porzingis. The next anything for that matter. 
Me personally, I never like when a player is called the next this person or that person because before they even get the chance to prove themselves and carve out their own path, they're forced to deal with expectations and asked to mimic another person's success even though by that time Chris Tapps Porzingis had only one year under his belt. Dragon Bender was caught up in the perfect timing being in the draft right after Porzingis and the entire NBA hyped on what he showed his rookie year for a team like the Knicks. But immediately after his first few games in the league, you could see Bender was simply not Porzingis in any way at all, except he was a 7-footer that could shoot threes. But Bender was not a good 3-point shooter in the NBA, the skill he was expected to come in and excel at. It's also interesting because Bender at a young age began playing basketball as a point guard and eventually playing the small forward position for a long time. It wasn't until he got to Maccabi that he was considered a big man. He did have nice handle as a young player as well, albeit against much inferior competition in an environment he was comfortable and confident he could dominate the guys he's known since a younger child. The NBA more and more are bringing young stars to America or allowing their young stars to travel and compete against unknown competition and I think more of that will assist the league because you get to evaluate exactly where you are outside your comfort zone. Bender didn't do much of any porzingis ass stuff on the court. He was pretty much set in as a pick and roll guy who could roll for an uncontested layup or pop for a three which he attempted three a game over his career making 32%. His strength and speed against NBA players was also a problem for him as he couldn't force his way against them and naturally slower in foot speed so really had no offense to speak of he could count on. Chris Tapps Porzingis was really a unicorn before his injury as he was crafty, really could dribble and could get hot from deep. His second and third all-star year with the Knicks were amazing. Dragon Bender's growth may have came along much better had he not been compared to than expected to be the next Chris Tapps Porzingis. Stun number two didn't offer much else. Plain and simple, sometimes the player himself is the problem and anything outside of that cannot be at fault. I started to look at maybe being taken by the Phoenix Suns was a case of the player not going to a team he could excel on, seeing as at the time, Phoenix was still in the midst of a post Steve Nash rebuild mode, where they had numerous coaches underqualified for the job leading the ship, so maybe didn't put Bender in the best of situations and some of that can be true. The Suns did have Earl Watson, Bender's first two years with the team, a coach with a 33 and 85 overall coaching record. Then first time head coach and first time non-North American born coach Igor Kokoskov who lasted one season with a 19 and 63 record and was fired and never given a head coaching job again. All that could be and probably was a factor in Bender's play but seeing as he did have opportunities with other teams like the 7 total games he played with the Milwaukee Bucks, a team that won the championship the season after waving Bender, so I can't place too much blame on teams. He also had a few 10 day contracts with the Golden State Warriors whose resume needs no introduction and still couldn't stick. As a 7 footer there's no way you average .6 blocks for your career. As a 7 footer, there's no way you average 3.9 rebounds for your career. As a 7 footer that was a top 5 pick in the NBA draft to a team with not much other options, should you average 5 points a game? To say Bender was soft or weak, low motored or not competitive enough would even be too much credit as he just didn't have what it took to grow into the player expected, probably because Stun number three, better off home. Writing this feature, it was clear to me that Dragon Bender is a case of a player that's just better suited in Euro leagues and other leagues than the NBA. It takes a certain pedigree to come to America and have success period, but to do it against all the best in the world who are physically more athletic and stronger than you, who also have a chip on their shoulder having to be raised in a place it's not all love and unlocked doors. 
In Europe, the game is also much more fundamental, where teammates care less about being the star as they do about playing the right way. A way Bender calls beautiful basketball, and he's right. But the NBA is a different animal. There, it's all about the individual first, no matter what they say. If you're going to be a star, you must act and truly feel like one, and you have to be the most competitive when you come from somewhere else. Take Luca, for example. You can see in his eyes and body language, Luca is not afraid of anyone on the floor. He wants to demolish your spirit and hates to lose. Bender didn't have that dog in him to be the star the fourth overall pick says he should have been. After being waived, he went back to Maccabi Tel Aviv, where even he says it fits him much better. He suffered a season-ending injury in May 2021 that caused him to miss the entire 21-22 season and says he plans to stay over there for the foreseeable future. All in all, I think Bender was doomed from the start because he never had the love for the American game in the first place. He wasn't competitive enough to excel on that level and wasn't built for the hype. He was in the right place, right time, benefited from it, then exposed as another imported bus. He had opportunity and physical advantage, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.